guys hear that? The car is running! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. This is amazing. Stop it. We're not saying that on camera. We had something going on today that they don't tell you about JZX100 ownership. The car is 26 years old and there are many things that are gonna go wrong on this car. And we got bit by the fuel pump bug. It, we think it's the fuel pump because whenever we drive this thing long distances, the car literally just shuts off. All power turns off. I'm sorry, the, the engine shuts off. All the power stays on, the radio stays on. Blinkers work, gauges are on, but the, obviously there's no RPMs. And so um, the engine just loses all power and dies immediately, it doesn't sputter. And we've been searching the forums all over the place and everyone says it could be the fuel pump. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna pop off the back seat, pop in a new fuel pump, and then we're gonna put our very first go fast goodie on the car. And I'm really excited about it. So let's just dive on into it. Uh, in order to get the fuel pump off from the car, it's the same thing that we did when we installed the coilover coilovers the back seat needs to come off first pull the the, uh, the bottom then you pull the top and then the fuel pump access will be in there somewhere and so we'll just jump right on into that all right in order to get to the factory fuel pump you have the access panels right here and it's kind of got a, like a a gluey texture to it you can get a flathead in here and pad this panel off and then you should be able to open up this panel and get into the fuel pump so let's do that now I like to make a big deal out of it okay a 14 all right so what you want to do is you want to pull the lines off first um, once you get the lines off then you can hit these with eight millimeter sockets don't use a flat don't use a Phillips you might strip it and you should be able to pull this whole assembly out so I disconnected the fuel pump uh, connector there. I did loosen this up just a little bit, so let's tighten it back up with our fingers. And then now I'm gonna suck the fuel out of the lines by giving her a little bit of a crank. All right, let's see what happens. All right, no power to the fuel pump, just cranking all the fuel out, and we're good. Let's do that one more time, just to make sure the lines are nice and clear. And we'll do it one more time. All right. Once you crack this on open, it's gonna leak some fuel out, that's for sure. This is your main line that feeds your engine. And so even though I cranked it with the fuel pump off, there's still gonna be a little bit of drippy drips of fuel coming through here. You can see it. And so the rags really help because you're gonna be spilling a lot of fuel everywhere. Um, I can already see it weeping out of there. Um, and so I'm just gonna work on pulling this off some more and then we'll pull off the return and we should be good to go. If there's anything like mine, as soon as you pull off that return line, it's gonna start pouring gas. Just heads up, a lot of gas just came out of that and I've gone through like seven rags. It's a lot of gas, so heads up, you could get very high in this car from all the gas fumes that are coming out. Well, that gas is dripping all over and making me high. We can start working on removing the uh, the bolts that hold in the the cover of the fuel pump here. So, all right. So here's the fun part. Now that you've pulled all those bolts off, you're you're gonna want to pull the fuel pump out, and it's gonna make a mess all over your car. <laughs> There's no easy way to do this. So I'm gonna put towels here, and uh, I'm gonna remove this guy, and this should be able to come out now. Let's see. All right, she's out. All right, here's my handy dandy workbench. And you can see this is the factory fuel pump with a little bit of MUI on it. I think that's from being outside actually, from touching the ground. Um, super simple setup here. You have a little resistor guy here that goes to your, your, uh, your connector. You have a ground that goes to the fuel pump. This is the feed line. There we go, feed line, return line. In order to get this off, 
what you're gonna do is you're gonna undo that connector there you're gonna undo this line here and that should let the fuel pump just kind of be loose and then you pop the fuel pump off the bottom there including this little bladder go get your new new one pop it in you might have to solder in new positive and negative terminals but we'll get to that when when it's time to get to that so uh let's move on all right so what we're getting here is a genuine walbro 255 liter per hour fuel pump made in the usa i'm not buying this for fuel pressure and horsepower i'm buying it for reliability i don't think our chaser is going to make any anywhere near the horsepower uh, that's needed to upgrade this to an even bigger fuel pump. So we're just gonna stick with this for a while. But really what you do is uh, you transfer this over. This is obviously your feed line here. This is your, your little snapper snap or your little plug. And then you have to snap on the little filter bag on the bottom here. Also they include a new one of these grommets. So let's get into the rest of the kit. That's how you want it to be, just like that. Everything's tight, everything's on. Good to go. Now we can throw this back in the car before it gets too dark. But that, my friends, is a new fuel pump assembly. It looks so sick. Woo! Sick. So dope. So dope. All right, it's time to put this back in. Put the bag in. All right. And then it's just gonna like twist and find its way in, you know? All right, we're in. Good, good, good. Okay, that's nay. Plug it back in. That's in. Good. And now we can put those bolts back in place. We're not done yet. Now that we put on the fuel pump, that doesn't mean that the car is going to run. There's still one more thing that could be blocking fuel to from getting to the engine and that's the fuel filter it's 7 30 now it's getting a little dark so i actually have time to do that and so super simple you're gonna get underneath the car and pop out the fuel filter i bought one from japan shipped over to the house and now is a better as good as time as any to install it so let me uh jack up the rear of the car put some jack stands down and throw in the fuel filter Enter the JDM Part Supreme. This is a genuine Toyota fuel filter from Japan that I got for the Chaser. Brand new, straight out of the Toyota box. Um, very stoked to have gotten this because this is what the car needs. It's not some janky uh, ripoff. This is the one. And the fuel filter is actually located right in front of the rear tire, right up in there. And so we're going to go underneath there. I think this is a 19 and I think those fittings are the same uh, 12s or 14s to get them out of here. So I don't know what these are, but let's see what we can find out underneath the car. Looks like it mounts like this, right? And so in order to uh, release the, the filter, you gotta pop these off here and then pop these off. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna loosen the lines first. And I think that's gonna be a 14 and a 19. And then I'll pop, I'll pop off the filter. Let me make sure I can get these off first. That's a 14 here. Alright, that's off. Let's get this guy out. We got the factory Toyota fuel filter back in place. How cool is that thing? Ah, oh, so stoked. Anyway, just bolts right back up. No problem. And uh, obviously brand new. This one had some corrosion on it and obviously some black paint that's now all over my hands, no big deal. But uh, we should be able to pop this back in. It's the same thing. These are 10s, put the 10s back in place. This is a 14, that's a 19. The 19 doesn't move, only the 14 does. And then put the 14 back in and you're good to go. You don't need to watch that, so let me just button this up right now and then I can go back inside. Let's see what happens. Leaks in there, looking good. Looks really good, no leaks. 
Smells a little bit like fuel, but I don't see any leaks. Here we go. All right, let's go underneath. Nothing. Looking good. If she turns off while I go inside to eat dinner, then definitely the fuel pump didn't solve the problem, but at least you got a new fuel pump. <laughs> it looks like replacing the fuel pump did not work. She just dies immediately after starting it. All right, we're back in the garage with the chaser and um, you can see the engine bay on this thing is pretty damn stuck. The only thing that's missing is the cover because that's in the back seat because I changed the plugs and all that stuff. But <clears throat> I still can't find the reason why she breaks up when she gets warm. She literally just dies. And I have a bunch of things on the way. I got a cam, two cam sensors that I ordered. I got a crank position sensor that I ordered. But before those come in, I'm going to try and fix it the easy way. And that might just be cleaning the math. Here's the mass airflow sensor. She's out. And uh, it doesn't look too dirty. It actually looks really clean in here. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a spray inside this little tube in here, see if it cleans it up. It's time to move on to something that I got from Amazon Prime Japan. That's right, folks. You can order US, you can order to the United States from Amazon Prime Japan, JDM parts. You just pay Prime shipping and your JDM parts arrive. And what we got here is a brand new unbox blitz core power lm intake and she's gonna go right there intake is actually super duper simple to install but it comes with instructions and pictures just in case you you need some help on installing it the outer cone has its own uh clamp on it and that's illustrated here you can see the outer cone goes on the, the clamp goes on the outer cone and then the inner cone this is this thing the uh, this plate bolts to the back of it like so you use these bolts here to screw it in place actually use the short ones you use these bolts here to screw it in place and then um, there's a little L bracket right here that's included that will hold the intake in on the side and I think there might be a mount for the L bracket somewhere but let's go ahead and start super simple install and then we can hook it up to the intake itself all right i got the intake assembled you put the bracket on the back this is the l to bolt it to the frame put the filter on and then i got myself a metal pipe that i actually wrapped her lined because i wanted it to sound a little bit more intakey noise than the plastic one that came with the car <clears throat> we got the black intake pipe on the actual j pipe of the engine and now we got to throw in the mass airflow sensor that i just filled or i just clean like crazy i don't think this is going to actually solve our problem i still think we're going to have a problem but i'm going to pop this on and we should be able to start the car up and make some really cool dosing noises so uh, let's pop this in place All right, we got the first piece of go fast goodies on the car. And so now it's time to give her a start and a rev. So let's see what happens. Wah! Wah! It started. Oh, it does? Uh oh. Worse, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Go back, scared. One side. <laughs> They're 
dog <laughs> it whistled all the dogs are freaking out so that's a so that sounded cool but uh, i think the car runs worse now well hey we got an intake on now it's time for us to <laughs> continue to fix whatever's wrong with the car help yeah. oh man last time we left off the car still wasn't staying on when uh when we fired her up but Today I'm gonna change the coil packs and the plug wires. I changed the plugs in the street in Tacoma a couple weeks ago. And so today we're gonna change the coil packs and the plug wires and see if this bad boy stays on. And if it does, we get to go do 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 noises all up and down the street. All right, you can see the difference. This is a brand new one that I got from Amazon. Now it's not made in China, uh, it's not made in Japan doesn't look OE but it's gonna be enough to at least troubleshoot here's the factory one you can see the factory one looks a little old still says Toyota on it made in Japan you can see the difference you know this one looks a little bit the one on the left looks newer than the one on the right and so we'll pop this in and then I'll throw in some new wires just to make sure and that might solve the problem All right, when you're doing the coil packs, it's pretty simple. The last cylinder in the back of the engine mates up to the first cylinder. So when you look at these wires here, this wire has to go all the way back to the, the plug that fires this coil. Then you have the two wires in the middle or the two coils in the middle fire themselves because that balances the engine, right? So that eliminates this coil pack. Then the very last step you have to do is number two cylinder which is this one fires number five cylinder which is this one and you just got to make sure the wire goes to it and that's fine so <clears throat> these wires were a little bit longer than the factory ones and you can tidy them up with like a zip tie or even a wire a wire holder but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put on the valve cover now and uh see if it holds it just fine uh, check everything up, make sure that everything's tight, then we're going to start the car and see if she idles. If it's as simple as the coil packs, I'm going to be a happy man. If it's not as simple as the coil packs, then we have other things we can change today as well. So we're going to watch that temp gauge, and if it goes up, uh, that's when she dies. So, so far, so good. Alright, the temp gauge is moving up, and uh, she's getting warmer, and she died. Man. All right, I changed the coolant temp sensor, the two wire one that actually goes to the ECU to tell it what temperature the engine is. And I started it up and it still died. <clears throat> but now when it dies, it goes, dude, boom. It doesn't just die. Um, I know I'm introducing a lot of variables to the equation here, but here, check it out. We should, should start up, starts up. Seems to be running good. Give her a little bit of a rev. And she died. You guys hear that? The car is running. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Turns out it was our ECU. Oh man. And so I airshipped the used one from Japan, popped it in, cleaned everything up, and she's running. I haven't taken her on a test drive yet, but she's idling and she's not dying. But what I really wanted to do was finish up the intake that you guys saw me install. The car's running right now, so you might hear it. <clears throat> I actually put in the Blitz intake, but I didn't, I hate the way chasers look with just like two snaked pipes around here with an intake. It doesn't look good. Unless you do the full top mount with like a custom intake and you map conversion, it just looks stupid here. So I kept the factory airbox, put a nice little cutout. Actually kept the factory airbox, ordered a brand new <laughs> or used factory airbox piece from Japan don't worry that's not the one that came with the car that one's I'm holding on to this is just a scrap one from a junkyard cut it out to fit the blitz intake and check it out look hi there's an intake in there so we get all the dose pipe noises all the flutter but the factory look and this was super cheap because it shipped broke so that that doesn't mount up but this one mounts and best part of all all 
all the turbo noises factory look so that's enough of me rambling on let's go take it on our, i'm gonna wash it right now and then we're gonna take it on a test drive and i might cruise to a car show and uh finally enjoy the chaser oh this is so awesome You have no idea how happy I am. This is rad. I get to cruise while there's while the sun is still out in Washington. Hell yes! Ooh.